Welcome all and thank you for joining us once more for the Back Nine final round coverage of the 2021 St. Charles Open here at New Melly Lakes. I'm Rebecca Kersey and back with me I have Rob Pandon. What's up everyone? Let's take a look at where the lead card is sitting after 45 holes played and only nine more to go. Andrew Presnell at 15 down, Paul Oman at 12 down, Brock Roller at 5 down, and Derek Green at 1 down. This is going to be an exciting finish here. Nine holes to go. Let's see how it plays out. I'm excited. We have hole 10. This is a 283-foot shot, par 3. The basket is actually sitting up on the right of uh, the fairway there on that berm next to that little pond there. So uh, they need to get out of the gap on this one and essentially not go OB behind the basket. The water is maybe 10 feet from the basket yeah maybe and it slopes down towards it so yeah you can see the slope there that's a good shot by brock with a forehand yeah getting it to stick near the basket ideal but just over the top of that hill over the top of that berm there's water in the backdrop so it's a, it's a touchy tricky shot should be really nothing more than a putter for a lot of these guys and prez doesn't Really make it all the way out. I mean, I think he's just going to be in that tall junk kind of there at the opening. Um, that backhanded shot, though, it's a tough one. It is. You have to get enough angle on it. And the height is actually very important, as you yeah. saw there. He got caught up being too low. But if you go too high, you can see the low ceiling that Paul might be challenging here. Yeah, he caught a little bit of it. Oh, he's lucky to get out a little bit further, though. He is in the fairway. A tricky upshot. For a par, especially if you hit metal, you have a good chance of rolling back down the hill. Yeah, this hole played exactly at par today. Really? Three even? Mm-hmm. Okay. Derek looks like he's got this on a really good line. That is great. But he, oh, it's very, very close. Uh, still a great line, line, like you said, for that backhand. And he'll be just at the edge of the circle um, with a tricky putt. Andrew, I don't, so I don't really see him running this. No, I don't think there's a need to just lay it up on the hillside there. That's even a little low. Probably not a worry for him, but for a putter like me, that's a tricky shot. Yeah, like on a windy day, I wouldn't want a pot like that by any means. No, Paul, it's great up there. Derek doesn't mess with it. He just lays up. Sorry, guys. If you miss that basket at all from that angle, you're in the water. Or maybe you get lucky and it clips that tree and it falls down. Yeah. But then you're left with another tricky putt. So Brock here, only solid look for a birdie. And he connects. Very nice. Pulling away just a bit more from Derek. Right now, without seeing the chase card, looks like he's pretty square in third place. Yeah, I didn't notice there for a second um, how the gap had increased between the two of them at this point. Yeah, it expanded a little bit. You know, I think we were more focused on Andrew and Paul, but um, there there was a tight race there for third, and there still could be with the chase card. Mm-hmm. Andrew taking his time. Good no par. No problem. Good par. We got a couple more tap-ins. Just that, like that. That pond eats discs, too. There's so many in there. It's crazy. Hole 11, par 3, 370 feet. Pretty uphill off the tee. There's our short pad there. You want to get there and have the disc turn right. Head up the fairway a bit more, and you're going back left here, deep into the back corner. Uh, pretty well guarded. A lot of trees. It's almost that kind of forced backhand again that turnover that's mm-hmm. going to be something stable enough to finish to the left and hopefully get a little ground play um brock looks like he's lining up a forehand yeah there is a gap you can take it's a little risky but he's uh he likes to risk it for the biscuit gets knocked down yeah look pretty good just didn't didn't start fading soon enough he should still have a decent look kind of far away but at least he's up to the top of the hill. Yeah, step one. Always get to the top of the hill. 
Prez is showing us that backhand line. He turns his over, but it's a little too low and just digs right into the ground. It leaves him in the middle of the fairway, but he's probably not as far up the fairway as he would have hoped to be. <laughs> Paul, is he going for a disc change here? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was switching it up. Okay. I was trying to remember. Maybe something a little more understable. Yeah, because the wind, uh, I mean, it's not like crazy windy, but it's just enough that when you have to put your disc on that sharp angle that it can shove you into the ground early, like we just saw happen to press. So he is going to switch his up just a little bit. And he sneaks pretty far up. Almost right there by the A placement. Yeah. Yep. Derek's lining up his shot and is hoping to do something similar. Turn. Ooh, on, just baby. inside that tree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Had good height on it. Yeah, I think it got a decent ways up the fairway, and he should be able to run one for a look. Probably better look than most. Brock looks like he's got a tricky flex forehand here. Really steep angle. Mm, catches something again. Just having a hard time getting through clean. This is definitely one of the courses that can beat you up mentally. Like If you just barely catch those trees, if you're having one of those days yeah. where you're off your line just a little bit, mm -hmm. it can just tear you up. Yeah, because it truly is just like an inch or two difference and the result's extreme. So Prez just tosses up underneath the basket and Brock. For par, pretty good bid. Yeah. So this is where um, Paul's drive was. Okay. Just to kind of put it in relation to everyone else. Can see the basket back there. He's probably making a run at this. He needs to catch Prez. Eh, half bid maybe. It's a yeah. little low. And that leaves us with Derek, who had, in my opinion, the best drive, and just has this one tree right in front of him that he has to be sure to avoid. So he hyzers around it and just drops it in next to the basket. And so this hole had no birdies on the day. Again. Not a single one. Does that, do you think, does that lean towards course design or is that just the way it played for the day? I don't know. I, this is tough to get all the way up here. Obviously Derek had a look, you know, but he was still outside of the circle. So I don't know. That's a tricky one. It's tough to say. We go to hole 12. This is par four, 470 feet. These players are looking to carry the water as far down as they can and break off um, as much of a chunk as possible. They have the distance to do it. It is a par four and it's a pretty easily birdieable hole. There is also notably a drop zone on this hole if they do land in the water. I believe the rule was no matter where you land in the water or how you land in the water, if you land in the water off your drive, you proceed to the drop zone. Yeah, so even if maybe you hit and rolled back, you still, that's tough. Correct. So that makes the hole a little bit more difficult. Yeah, Presnell, he is in bounds right there. Um, he caught some of that stuff uh, on the edge and just he stayed up. You're really looking to pump this out there flat. Hyzer to flat. You don't necessarily want it to turn over at all. This looks good from Paul. And make sure you're finishing left. Might be a little short. Yeah, it's a little short and left of the basket. He has um, some foliage in his way, but nothing that he can't handle. Yeah, and like you said, it's a it's a hyzer shot. If you hold on to it or stay too straight, there you do run the risk of not um, turning and fading back 
into the fairway. Let's go get up. Good shot, Derek. Yeah, that was great. Lastly, we have Brock. And we're going to see a backhand out of him. That looks a little early. It looks high also. Yeah, and so that mm -hmm. is the risk that you run if you early release or get it up too high. All of those mature trees and the branches and the leaves coming off of them are just grabbers of your disc and throw you right down into the water. So Brock's going to have to go to the drop zone. You can see the challenge here also. The drop zone is, is very far back in the fairway. So you're now competing with a lot of trees to go up the fairway. And he just pured it. What a great shot. I don't even know He's what I'm talking about. Such a good recovery. Yeah. I'm really impressed. That puts him under the basket for a par. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, and that just kind of goes to show you again how easy it is to birdie this hole. I mean, if you can go OB off your drive, go to the drop zone, and then still save par, that, I mean, birdie's an option. And so that was Paul's look for an eagle. And that brings us now to Derek. This an is his drive. Well, yeah. So he puts this in there, and he can walk away with a two. I think he's going to do it. What do you think? I already know, so I'm not going to oh, say Oh, yeah, you do. I was there. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. No jump on the putt. Ah, he cans it. Drilled it. You know what I love is Noelle is in the background, and she doesn't watch while he putts. At purpose. all? No, because yeah. she like can't. She can't oh. watch. She like, can't ever. Sometimes like, I think she does, but like I, I had noticed that she had had her back turned, and we talked about <laughs> it afterwards. That's funny. Great too, DG. God, that was so awesome. This is Presnell for two as well. Yeah, they all had a look. And so what? He's just gonna, you know, ten foot yeah, birdie putt. Couple tap in birdies. Brock here for par. Yeah, this was the second easiest hole of the day, and it was playing just a little more than a half stroke under par. Yeah, kind of between a three and a four. Closer to a, maybe a par three, but depending on the card you have, I mean, yeah. Could play either way. Having the distance off the tee really helps here. Press Same routine, it taps it in. Yep. All to clean up. Here we go. On to the next. Hole 13, par 3, 345 feet. This one goes down the fairway, takes a sharp turn, pretty much 90 degrees to the left. Uh, it shows the A pin here. We're actually playing to the B pin, which is a bit deeper into the fairway. So your first shot, you're looking to get down to the end of this tunnel and pretty much try to stay in the middle. Uh, if you push too far, you're going to be in the woods. If you cut off too short to the left, you're going to be in the woods. And Derek looks a little inside, oh, where's stretching. The catch? No catch cam on that one. It's hard to tell. Yeah, he doesn't. He looks like he doesn't like it, but not too yeah. sure. We'll have to see. Yeah, you're right. Just going by his body reaction. This is tough. Again, I mean, this. there's so many trees. Another tight corridor. Another opportunity. If you get a bad kick, you're in jail. I mean, Paul is is definitely hoping for something to go wrong here. Yeah, that's true. With Andrew. So could be a possibility for him to get a stroke back. Although, well, okay. it looks like he leaked a little bit to the right. Yeah, so essentially he stayed too straight off the tee. And, you know, it bends. So that puts him in now on the right side of the fairway. And I've been up there before. It is really tricky from up there. There's a bunch of little trees in your way. Like a lot. Paul going to throw it back in. It's a pretty steep hydra looking to get some ground play. Uh, oh, and instead, he got some tree play. Got the tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Out of the hand, it looked great. <laughs> you almost want to throw it a little low and try to get that flare skip at the end. Yeah. If you can. Here's Brock with old trusty, old trusty perp. He loves this thing. He's been throwing it well. Yeah. I don't blame him. Probably took a little damage off them rocks on six. Okay. It's a good kick. Yeah. He's right in the middle of the fairway. That's 
about as good as you're going to get unless you get, you know, some kind of skip there to the left. I know. Sometimes I feel like you just have to cross your fingers on this one and just hope you get through clean. It's, it's tough. Derek does have a pretty good looking window here. He needs it to turn right a little more. Yeah. Didn't trust it, I yeah. don't think. And Paul's shot looks kind of similar. They need to hit this gap, and then they need it to finish right at the end. That's asking a lot. He puts it through there, and that is a great shot. That, is, that has got to be a flippy, really flippy putter. Yeah. The way that flew, but yeah, He's great so touch. Good at just threading the needle and throwing super straight shots. Well, puts the pressure on Presnell here. You can see, you can barely see his face through the tunnel and another forehand, yep. which you ordinary. don't see often from Andrew. Early tree. He's going to have to make a good putt to stay uh, in stride with Paul for this hole. You are correct. Brock. Routine forehand it stops a little short, but again, inside circle and shouldn't be too difficult. Now, speaking of difficult, this one is like almost impossible to make from where Perez is. But never count him out. He's going to give it a go. That's a good shot, though, still. Yeah. We've seen him make crazier putts than that at times. That's but. true. That's why you can never, never dismiss it as a possibility. Brock with a little bit of a tester for his three, up and in. He's such a good putter. I feel like I rarely see him miss. Especially inside the circle. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so this is Derek uh, to save three. Nice putt, friend. Good putt. Right in the heart of the basket. Derek's making a little bit of a run at Brock again. Yeah, so he's closing up that gap just a little bit, just as Paul is going to do here. And so things are getting exciting as we're going into the last few holes here. Tough couple holes. Yeah, as well. anything can happen at this point, really. These, I would say, probably three out of four of the toughest finishing holes in St. Charles. Agreed. And speaking of that, we're going to go to hole 14, par 4. This is 667 feet. It is a long one. It is uh, open for the first two-thirds. And then at the end here, we're going to go into the tree line. And we're actually going to go back to that uh, basket where that PVC pipe is in the back there from the drone shot is our uh, B position. Um, so right here, it's just important that the players get a good wind read and smash one out there on their drive and try to break off a huge chunk. It's one of the holes on the on this course he can really let loose. You just read my mind. I was thinking the exact same thing after playing so many wooded holes. They can really put one out there, and that is exactly what Derek does. That's for the old guys. Kind of tough to tell. Might have been a little bit right, but yeah, you have this little bit of an uphill slope off the tee. Makes it a little tricky. You have to make sure you manage your nose angle well. If you get it too high, obviously you're going to stall out and be a little bit short. But all these guys should be able to recover no matter as long as they don't put one into the ground. Yeah, that's true. Um, they all have plenty of distance, so they could lose a little bit of drive and make up for it in a different shot. That looked like an early release. Was that just an understable disc? You know, I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Um, but yeah, because sometimes he will just work one, work one over. Brock letting that one fly. Did that look a little high to you? It did look a little. Yeah, he definitely stalled out a little early. Agreed. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see where his next shot's from, but. I think from that angle, though, dead. he should be able to play a forehand into the green. That's true. And we know he has a massive forehand, so he can make it work from there. Doesn't look like much wind movement at the moment. Yeah, which is kind of odd. It's usually windy out here. Press takes a huge run up and gets everything into it. That is great. 
God. Yeah. He's almost equal with that gap, just short of it. So he's cutting off his angle into the pin. You ever see Brock lining up that forehand? He's trying to punch one low underneath the trees and skip up in there, I would assume. Oh, that looks like it was a little, little early. Yeah. yeah. Took a pretty bad hit. Actually, not too far outside the circle. You can yeah, see you the can marker. See. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It is a par four, so if he has the ability to pitch one up there. But with him and Derek being so close, you know, even a par at this point can make you a little nervous if you're opponent's going to take a birdie. Derek looks to be going over the top. Okay. Spike Heiser. Yep. That's right. He's just going to hope that it plinkos down into the, the green. It also is a little short, so he's going to have a few trees in his way. Not not a bad shot. Might be able to navigate it. Yeah. Paul, I think he got right about even with the mouth there, like pretty well Okay, open. so maybe, yeah, that, wow, that thing went far. It's a little bit of a turnover. Got to push. Good ground play. I think he's kind of high. Great shot. He's looking at an opportunity for a birdie. Now Prez has to match. Exactly. That's when it gets interesting. He's no stranger to pressure. No, Obviously. he does this every weekend. It's a good looking turnover. Oh yeah, right in his wheelhouse. Brock here for his third shot. Got to get creative. Yep, there's a high forehand and lets it drop back in towards the pin. Derek has to go to a knee on this one. He loves these putts, though. Like these falling forward yeah. outside the circle putts. I've seen him hit so many. Oh, he's full send, full body sacrifice. At this point, you have to be. For sure. Two strokes behind. I don't know if he's paying attention to that, but Ooh. just yeah. off to the left side. It's a good bid. Andrew looking to dial up a birdie here. Barely sneaks it in over the rim. Man, made me nervous. But it is in nonetheless. Way to stay collected. Yeah. Yep. This is Brock for par. Taking his time. Ooh. Rare. Yeah, I, I feel like he almost thought about that one too much. It's possible because we, I mean, we are, we're winding things down here, you know, so. And I'm sure Brock has to know that Derek's on his, on his heels. Yeah. To, to an extent. I mean, some, I don't know, some players pay attention to the scorecard when they play their round. I personally don't. Right. I don't know how everyone else is, but I would rather stick to my game until you get down to the last couple holes when if you know you're in contention, maybe you do look at the scorecard yeah. and see how you need to approach the next few holes. On to hole 15, par four, 610 feet, wide open bomber hole. These guys are going to let loose. Basket here is elevated very high up on the rock. Uh, I believe, I mean, this is kind of the picturesque trademark hole of New Melly. Yeah, I mean, you as a photographer have taken so many beautiful pictures of this hole. I have. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. Try to get different angles and, you know, find, find different ways to capture uh, this hole, but yeah, these guys are going to let loose. I'm, I'm excited to see how close they can get off the tee. Yeah, especially because it's not crazy windy right now, and so they can really just let loose. Looks like Paul got a little uh, over anxious. Yeah, turned, turned that one over a little much, but you know that um, probably something understable and got a little extra on it. Let's see what Prez does as he gets it another massive run up. Runs all the way through it. 
Looks like he wanted it to flip a little bit more. As long as he stays out of that left side, yeah, he's fine. Yeah, you just don't want to, like, come out nose up or early and end up in that um, tree line on the left. It's pretty thick in there. And there's just so much room to work that you kind of beat yourself up when you do that, you know? It's Yeah, it feels so different coming out of these, you know, skinny tunnel wooded holes. And you have so much room and somehow end up you know you can't find the middle of the fairway sometimes i think it's just like excitement like you're so ready to let one go yeah you absolutely kind of lose yourself a little bit brock here's gonna dial up a backhand man that's crazy i've seen him get there with a forehand i'm curious why he chose a backhand on this day there you, go, brock. you got a pretty good turn on that that's a good drive oh yeah that is perfect and this is um a par four, right? So assuming that they can just put this second shot um, at the base of the rock, that's yeah. a pretty easy putt uh, from there since it's not a crazy windy day. On a windy day. <laughs> on a windy a day, it's a different story. I have seen people go back and forth on this thing for a hot minute. <laughs> I think I've done it myself, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, easy, easy snowman. If yeah. you can't, if you don't just take your layup, but yeah, we're going to see a few layups here. Try to get close to the base of the rock. You almost don't want to be under and touching. No, you can be, uh, there's a point where you can be too close. And so your angle coming up into the basket is just too extreme, extreme, especially with these, um, these chains, but you know, we talked about like those inner chains there, they can just push you right back out. So Derek's pretty close. I was just about to say Derek's right on that close. line. We'll see. This is another one of those holes where I am really conscious about what side of the basket I'm leaving myself for my putt. With the wind direction? Yeah. Yes. I'm always thinking about it every time I play this hole. I mean, that's... Paul's a tall guy, and he's, you know, he's about head even with the rock, so... Great putt. Yep, that was a birdie for him. I've seen, yeah, even on windy days, you get that putt up in those chains, and the wind just pushes it right back at you. Yeah. If you got a headwind. Mm hmm. It's, it can be brutal. So you just want to leave yourself in just the right spot if you can. That's a nice one from Presno. He has no problems. Brock, a little bit closer. You can see how you're looking up at the basket. It's a good putt. I'm curious to see how close Derek is. This is where, as like a short person, I get nervous. This, yeah. <laughs> like I want to slam dunk it in there, but you just can't. <laughs> yeah, with no wind, but still, it's it's a steep angle. Yeah, and that's what they're kind of talking about right now. Yeah, I know. I actually thought it through. Hole 16, par four, 467 feet. This is gonna be. Uh, an open shot initially there's a mando on the right that you have to say left of and then a bunch of trees that just litter the fairway the second half and the fairway does slope down to the left all the way through once you get all in the, the way through yeah so this first shot can be tricky because you're like i need to avoid the mando on the right yeah but you don't want to overdo it exactly and go too far to the left Paul looks like he's got this flipped up pretty well. And needs to keep turning. Yeah, hit something. Caught a tree. Yeah, dropped him back a little bit. He did get past Amanda, though. And it's true. Yeah, the idea there is you want to take away that big spike hyzer to the right. Force these players to play down the tunnel. Andrew. Mm. Wow, look at the work on that. That was roped. Kind of nasty ground play. Thought mm -hmm. he could have got some more distance there, but dead smack in the middle of the fairway. Looks good. Yeah, you can't count on a skip here because there's just so many rocks everywhere. Oh, Derek connects with an early tree on the left side, and it kicks him down left even further. That's a tough break. Brock with the forehand. I like the forehand play on this hole. You want to flip it up just inside. Oh, he missed it, though. 
Did he? He got a really good kick. That was that was tracking outside the Mando. Uh, it looked yeah, like. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and it kicked back in? It yeah, like he hit something and it redirected. That that's a true redirect. Okay. And uh, it put him in a really good spot in the fairway. <laughs> and so think about it again, him and Derek are battling right now, yeah. right? And Derek just ended up in kind of a not so fun spot and he's gotta keep his head in the game and battle. He tosses up a thumber. Yeah, that was a thumber. Which just, we don't see Derek throw very often. No, he is just trying to get back into position. Oh, no. Brock is throwing from the drop zone. Oh, my gosh. I wonder. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. So I know was, it was discussed, and so it might have been. I wasn't sure if that was like a provisional or. It's hard to tell sometimes. Because I don't think especially. we had like a spotter standing there necessarily to make the call. Okay. Maybe that's something we look into next year. Yeah, maybe. Because that same problem that we had on hole 12 is um, quail. Okay. Yeah. Noted. Derek with a pitch up there trying to just break off some uh, some acreage with the fairway. Paul's in a really good spot. Well, maybe not from this camera angle, but should be able to get up there. Oh, that's great. Leaks a little far, but it's... That's a manageable putt. Yeah, within within 25. For uphill, sure. so you shouldn't have too much issue with it. Pressure on Andrew. He's got to match this. Mm. Just snags one. Wow. Yeah. That's right, we're keeping it interesting. Brock, this can be a tricky putt. As you can see, the the uh, green slopes down to the left. If you miss with a hyzer short, okay, so it's stuck. Yep. That can easily roll down that hill, and this is a death putt for Presnell. Ooh. Keeps it low. Yeah, just goes a little past where Paul's disc is sitting. Derek. Oh, that was a bad spit out on that one. I feel like maybe it was a little bit outside, but it looked like he hit low. I, I mean, know. low on the pro side. It looked pretty. It looked pretty good. Prez with an uphill comebacker makes good there. This is getting interesting. I know. We got two holes left. Things are heating up, folks. Mm. And so Brock is in for his bogey after having to go to the drop zone off that that tee shot. Which I believe Derek's putting for four here, right? Mm. Is he trying to put in his four? Uh, well, actually, we'll it might be a five for him because... He oh, we had the thumb out on yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, three, Paul. Paul. Excellent birdie. Yeah, that was nice. Picking up another stroke on Andrew. He's within one. Yep. So. Going on to 17. Yes, we are. We have another Mando here on the right hand side. Players must navigate that. It opens wide up after that tunnel severely downhill and you can see it this is an old ball golf course this is an old tee box uh, where this pin is located you go off that backside and roll downhill can be nasty there is ob through the tunnel and to the left some white posts if you do saw it off otherwise pretty well uh, open fairway just trying to push down there as far as you can i've seen some folks reach about pin high off the tee pad so it is possible I love this tee shot. It is just so epic. Wow. <laughs> that was such a great one from Paul. He gets so far down the fairway that um, he's just closing up that approach shot so he doesn't have to come in, uh, you know, super far distance downhill. It almost looks like a triple Mando. I mean, it's not. 
I mean, exactly, because you have to keep it below those branches. Fresno looks like he's leaking early left, but he, actually he's on the, the B-pin location. Yeah, he'll have a nice look down at C-pin. It's dicey. Yeah, this one's just like landing in a spot that for your second shot, you can come into the green in a safe way. Right. You don't want to have to challenge yourself too much. Boy. No. Thank you. Derek put a move on that. Ooh, boy, that was juicy. That was that was nice. Finally, Brock. And I mean, that gap is pretty far off the tee, so it's a tough one to hit. Looks like he got turned over a little bit. Get some ground play. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Great skip. Look at that. It just had enough stability that it hit that right side and kind of flare skipped back left. And presently you can see walking up here, he's almost kind of blind. Like you can see the top of the basket, but yeah. you can't really see the profile of the green. And him having maintaining a one stroke lead here, he's really looking to put this close to the basket to ensure Paul, you know, doesn't have an easy shot to make up a stroke on him. Well played. Yep. Thank you. Good judgment. Just lays it up. See a bit of a gallery behind. Yeah, forming. at this point, we had a decent amount of people walking along. It was great to see everyone come out and support this uh, first A tier. Paul pretty well matching with his upshot. Yep. Yeah, we had tournaments running concurrently all, all three days, so... Most of the players were finishing, you know, a little a little bit before this, and some of them chose to actually drive out and get to check it out. Hopefully next year I think we're going to try to offset a little bit more Okay. so we can get if some of the later players still want to come and check out the gallery or the, uh, the lead card, they can. I mean, it was exciting to the last drop, so anybody who did come out, it was well worth it. So there we got pretty well four tap-ins here. For all birdies. It was yeah. Star birdie. You know, so one of the things I noticed today, Rob, is that um, there was four holes in which there were no birdies that played well over par. And, you know, I just have to wonder if that's, um, you know, if those holes, you know, need to be reassessed maybe par-wise or if it's just how today was. Derek, what I don't a know what goofball. Derek's doing there. He's a but hand. yeah, I mean, that's a great point. We're going in hole 18, our final hole here of the St. Charles Open. This is par 3, 301 feet, and it is all the way up. Really steep. The camera doesn't do it justice. Um, and it finishes here in between these uh, two sets of trees. You don't want to end up in early in either of those. You don't really have a shot out of there. So Presnell is in the lead by one. Can Paul even things up here? The safe, the, the safe bet here is definitely finish to the right, out away from those big trees. Give yourself a clean look. Paul, if he wants to stand any chance here, cannot let this leak left. That oh. is a great shot. He is inside the circle yeah. with a look for birdie down by one. Pressure on Andrew. I mean, this is not an easy tee shot. There's, you know, trees... You don't want to go left, um, and it's major uphill. It's so far uphill. And Perez with a great-looking drive as well. Hard to see where it was in relation to the basket, but I think he's got a clean look at it. Yeah, like pins been high, but he's definitely outside circle, uh, like a few steps, I would say. Okay. So, challenging. Tough putt. Yeah. Just to make it juicier here <laughs> on the final hole. And Derek here is within one stroke of Brock as well. Yep, that is correct. So Derek hangs us a little bit more outside to the right, but safe yeah. again. Takes the wide line. This is a tough shot. Oh, you have to put so much angle. Is he going forehand or yeah. roller, you think? 
Uh, looks like forehand. Okay. Yeah. Some angle with an understable disc, um, and he got it inside too much. Yeah, that is a really challenging angle. It's a lot to ask out of your disc. So, yeah, back to your point. Four holes with no birdies. That's something we're going to have to review. Yeah, it's just something to think about. I mean, I know par is all relative. Like, I get that. But um, when you have four holes that don't get a single birdie and play well over par you know maybe it's just food for thought sure Derek I'm sure checking the score here yes that's exactly what they're doing Noel is keeping tabs on PDGA Live and New Disc and all that goodness and letting Derek know uh, what his options are here you can see him ramping up he's he's going for this yeah he hung on to that one a little bit well I don't know he might not have been going for it knowing that Brock is going to be taking at minimum or at most i'm sorry a par yeah that's true it just looked like it hung on his finger just for a second but you're right he probably really wasn't going for it per se so, so andrew he yeah. lays up and leaves it to paul if paul makes this they push and go into a playoff here it is so exciting down to the wire Oh. Anticlimactic. He's got to be eating him. He didn't even give it a chance. I know it was. It's hard to tell. Like, did it clip a little? Something? Oh yeah, I guess he could have. I didn't are, see it. Yeah, there was just a you know a few little twiggy things kind of sticking out there, and because it just dove. That's unfortunate. It just knows. Yeah. I know he's such a good putter too. So he wants that back. Yeah, probably. Probably. For sure. So Brock here is trying to clean up a tricky par. Little horseshoe Hebenheimer <laughs> go to there just lays up. Nothing there. Derek with his smart play. Hey, Derek. Ends up taking his par. Thank you all. Paul with his par. Brock's gonna finish out with bogey here. Yeah, and that um, puts him and Derek tied for the round or for uh, the weekend. And that's our winner, Presnell Andrew Presnell. He is our winner of the inaugural 2021 St. Charles Open Smoking Aces Tour Championship. Team Smoking Aces member too. Good to see. Finishes at 18 down. And that does it for our 2021 St. Charles Open, the tour championship, and final stop of the Smoking Aces Tour. We appreciate you all for watching. Rob, thanks for being here with me. And for all of the viewers, we hope that you will please, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks, everyone. And until next time, Roberti and Shooter McBando signing off.